Welcome to Rob Morning Podcast, coming to you from the Mobile Command Center like we do every Thursday morning. All right, we are on a quest, if you will, to fill precinct chairs across Texas. We're doing five counties a week for a whole year. Hey, I, we don't do anything halfway, right? This week is a special week. We are not in alphabetical order in any of the five counties that we're showcasing. Why? Because we had people like yourself step up and go, hey, I can do that. I can make a few phone calls and fill a few precinct chairs and make life better and make the GOP look more like me and believe more like me. And that's what the target is. That's what the aim is. I don't handpick these precinct chairs and they're not little wind-up toys and the robots. They all have opinions and ideas and, and dreams and hopes. And they're all good Americans. And we're stepping them up. We're putting them in these positions for a reason. So that people have representation. I do believe in this system. I do not practice political idolatry. I don't worship political figures. Okay? I thought Trump was a great president. I voted for the man. The first time I voted against Hillary. The second time I voted for Trump. I thought he did a good job. But I don't, you won't hear me say, no matter what comes out of the man's ha uh, mouth, is pure gold. I'll listen to his policies. I'll listen to his ideas. And if I disagree with them, I will say that too. If, 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 if I vote for somebody and they turn out to be good, that's great. If I vote for somebody and they turn out to be bad, I'm not going to defend them. I'll throw them under the bus as fast as I'll throw anybody under the bus if they do wrong. It is, it is not a reflection on me that I picked the wrong person. I've done it in the past. So the five counties we've got going on right now, Collin County, Greg, Kaufman, Smith, and Tarrant County. Uh, Tarrant County is being headed up by David Lowe. He has a website out. I think it's David Lowe for Texas. And you can see the list of the precinct chairs that he needs, and he'll help you. He'll, he'll guide you through it. You don't have to call me to do the remote control thing from there. We've got a guy, you know, we've got that person. On our website, thefivestarplan.com, you can go there, you can see if your county's on the list and you can see who, we're, who we've got heading up that particular county. And you can call them and you can ask to volunteer. You can make phone calls. You can do this from anywhere in Texas with any of these counties. Just because it's not your county doesn't mean you can't make phone calls and fill these positions. So that's what I'm challenging everybody to do. None of us can do it all, but all of us can do just a little bit more. In Collin County, the GOP has been reformed to the point that on the GOP website, you can get a list of the empty precinct chairs. Imagine that. A county GOP organization actually actively trying to fill all of their chairs. They're at 79%. They're still counting. Now, within that group, you might have people you don't like, and you need to run against them if that's the case. But the beautiful thing is that they are working to fill these positions, and they're doing it way before the election. Now, I challenge every county GOP in Texas with a website to do the same thing. List your empty precinct chairs, put out an invite. Why don't you just for like, I don't know, a month, Spend as much time asking people to be involved and be members of the GOP as you do asking for donations or asking them to vote or asking them to attend a meeting. Actively invite these people. A lot of them have never been invited to be part of the GOP before, and we need to do that. Now, if you're in a strong GOP county, that's awesome. You need to secure that. You need to get so many people involved that the Democrats don't even bother running a cam uh, campaign in your county. That's where we are in East Texas. We're so red, it hurts. We're so red, the Democrats don't even waste time and money on it, okay? Now, if you're in a county that's 50-50, you need to shore that up and get to that point. And if you're in a county where it's nothing but Democrats, as far as I can see, don't give up. You can build this group. You can build your group. You can build your party and you can get enough voters to turn out to turn that county red. If you could somehow get 100% of Republican and conservative voters in Dallas, in Houston, to vote consistently, it would be red. We cannot get there on a 17% turnout, a 20% turnout, a 30% turnout. We need to get closer to 100%. The precinct strategy is the way to do that. That is the five-star plan in a nutshell. We build this precinct by precinct. We build the voter turnout. We build the loyalty to the party. 
and we make the party more conservative so that people who are sitting on the fence going, yay, the Republican Party left me, they're not very conservative, they come back. Where people on the border that vote Democrat right now are saying the Democratic Party sh stabbed us in the back because the border's still open, but the Republican Party isn't doing anything to stop it. They're talking, but they're not doing anything. So why switch parties? If we could get some conservatives, let's say 60 or 70 or 80 conservatives down in Austin with the R by their name, and we do something, we force the governor to form an interstate compact and we shut down the borders, these 5 million people that came across in the last two years, if we could shut that down, Democrats all along the border would flock to the Republican Party. But right now, there's no reason for them to do it because we're not doing anything. So those are the five counties, Collin, Greg, Kaufman, Smith, and Tarrant. You're in those counties, you know anybody in those counties, ask them to get involved, share this information. And while we're at it, everybody knows me as a sort of the guy that pushes this censure idea at the county level. Why do I do that? Because, folks, the precinct chairs can censure anybody in the Republican Party that represents them or their district, and it has to be done. The state party is not going to do it. You've leaned on the SREC to do this, and they have failed you miserably. We have a bunch of rhinos. We have 80-something rhinos using the Republican ticket to get into the dance, but they refuse to dance with us once we're there. That's in Austin. That's not in D.C. where they're ignoring you. That's right down the road. So I was talking to somebody and they said, hey, I haven't trusted anybody in D.C. for decades. I don't trust anybody in Austin for years. And I don't trust the GOP because they're not doing their job at the state level. So all we have left is your program. I've fought against it and argued against it and tried to stay away from it for about two years now. But I realize your option will has worked, will work, and I'm on board. And this is our last option. And I'm like, there's where you screwed up. Should have been your first option. The Not my plan, but the local control and the local precinct chairs taking the bull by the horns and doing what you want should have always been your first option. Why we got away from it, why we started trusting people further and further away from our house and our neighborhood and our precinct, I, I have no idea. I guess it was just easier. But that's over, folks. We need to fix this, and we need to fix it soon. Now, I was talking to somebody the other day, and you, everybody watching me knows somebody like this, right? I would move heaven and earth to save this nation, but I think it's just too late, so I'm not going to do anything. And I said, sir, if I'm wrong and we can't save this, I've wasted my time. If you're wrong and we still have a chance, you've wasted your chance and your opportunity. And between the two of us, I'd rather waste time than waste an opportunity. I love this nation. I love this state. I love its people. I don't want to see it to go around, to go away. I've been around the world twice. Folks, this is it. You couldn't pay me enough money to live anywhere else. Trump got in a lot of trouble when he referred to other countries as outhouses, okay, but he used less polite term. They are. I have seen little kids dive into open sewers when people tossed a five centavo piece into the river. A five centavo piece is five cents in uh, Philippine Republic money. A dollar in Filipino Republic money when I was there wasn't worth a penny, okay? You needed five bucks for a soda. You needed five of those for a beer or whatever. So try to imagine one-tenth of one percent of a penny, and it's worth literally diving into an open sewer to retrieve on the off chance that you could find it somewhere in there. These kids don't live long. They live about five years after they start doing that. But in the meantime, they have enough money to eat. That's a nation, folks. Those are somebody's children. And that's what we will be if we fall. And the only thing stopping us is you. The only thing stopping us from becoming that is us. And enough good people turn away, it only leaves the bad people to run things. And those people really don't understand 
they think they're going to grab enough money and power that them and their families will be exempt from that. They don't care about you and your family. A lot of these people are career politicians, and I will talk about this to the day I'm, day I'm dead. Career politicians have killed this nation. I don't care if they're even good career politicians. Once you're there for a certain amount of time, you lose sight of good and bad. You, 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 you just become part of the system. You, you go along to get along to try to get some good done. I would rather be an activist that has zero things passing and doing zero good and be true to myself than be the most effective politician in the world and have to sell my soul to do it. And the answer to that is to keep revolving and to keep moving them. Because if we leave good people in that system for too long, we will make them rot. It doesn't do us any good. It doesn't do them any good. There are far, far too many people who start out as good people. And they get a taste of that office and they become addicted to being elected. You have enabled them at some time or another. You've let them stay in office long, too long. You've given them too much power. You have enabled them. It's like if your kid came to you addicted to crack and you hand them another bag of crack. Well, if your kid's that far from ODN on heroin and you hand them more heroin. You re-elect and re-elect and re-elect these people and they get worse and worse and they get more addicted to that office. They can't help themselves. They'll sacrifice their families. They'll sacrifice their state. They'll sacrifice you and me and our families just for a little bit more taste. Just a little bit more power, a little bit more control. And it's all an illusion anyway. God's in control of all of it. I think it's all just a test to see if we'll do anything about it when these people go off the rails. So that's going on. Um, when we come back, we'll talk a little bit what's going on with Censure in Texas. Welcome back. So Censure. Censure is the, the county... Executive Committee, the GOP County Executive Committee in each county is made up of all the precinct chairs and of the county chair. And one of the most important things they can do is they can call foul on their own teammates. They can pass a censure against Cornyn. They can pass a censure against Greg Abbott if he steps out of bounds, if he violates the principles of the Republican Party. They can they can censure a person for voting the wrong way or not voting the right way. Um, it, there's a lot of things you can do with censure. And what this thing does is it makes it untenable for people to be a Republican in that particular district. You, you can ask Joe Strauss. He's a former speaker. He was a strong ally of the Democrats. He handed the Democrats all kinds of power. The Democrats handpicked him. And he was a turncoat. And he traded his integrity for the power of the speakership and he sided with the democrats and this was fixed when counties across texas censured the man censured him right out of politics he's not in office anymore more recently in the last election cycle east texas censured chris patty out of office not just out of running for the primaries yeah he pulled his name out of the hat for re-election but then he resigned because it wasn't good enough that he wasn't going to run again. They wanted to get rid of him. They had the opportunity. They already had passed censure in three counties. They had another three counties lined up. So he's completely gone. And nobody was going to run against him in the primaries. He had way too much money and support. You lowly little precinct chairs took care of that for the voters in East Texas. There's no other way to get rid of the guy. Otherwise, you had a choice between him and whoever the Democrats put up. Well, really, you didn't. He was a Democrat. He's... he's He's, you know, known to have said that he would run as a Democrat if he could get elected as a Democrat. If that's not enough, his very first stop after the last session was to go to the Democratic headquarters in Carthage, Texas, and talk to those people when he wouldn't return the phone calls of the county chairs in the six counties he supposedly represented as a Republican. This got fixed. Censure works, and it works at the county level. And sometimes it's multiple counties, but you can cooperate between counties and get this done. Now, the state organization, the, the state party, does not seem to support this thing. They badmouth censure, they denigrate censure, censure, and they will lie to people to try to stop you from using it. 
want. We'll see if the counties know how much power they have and how much control they have and they can kick these rhinos out of office before they even run for office. Then the state becomes less relevant. The state organization is just figureheads. They're just taking care of secretarial duties and they're not the be-all, end-all of the Republican Party. A lot of these people have spent years or even decades to get to the SREC and they don't want to watch the importance and the power of that position slip away to mere precinct chairs, mere voters. Oh my God, no, never. Okay? And the idea that they would lie to people to maintain that control and power should not shock you. Or maybe it should. It shocked me when I first figured it out. Now, the last example of that just happened in Tyler, Texas, at the Greater Texas Grassroots Coalition event. We had several people in attendance. Jill Glover, our SREC from across Texas that everybody knows and loves, Jill Glover stood up and told that county that, that Smith County could not censure uh, Day Phelan because only the people in Bear County could censure him because that's who he represents. Well, that is either A, a lie, or B, an ignorant statement from someone who's an SREC member. Now, look, whether she didn't know what she was talking about, or she's a liar, I don't care. You can flip a coin, because both things invalidates ever listening to anything comes out of her mouth again. My SREC member, Donnie Weisenbacher, uh, voted to censure Speaker of the House, Joe Strauss, out of his seat and out of his office. And he didn't live in Joe Strauss's district. When you're Speaker of the House of Representatives of Texas, you represent every county in Texas. And if you're part of the GOP, any of those GOP counties can censor you. Now, when we were busy censuring Cornyn right after the convention... SREC members went around and actually lied to people and said you could not censure him for this vote on the on, on the red flag laws because you could only censure someone for hap for something happened in the biennium. It's true that you can only censure someone for, for violations that happen in the biennium, but the biennium starts the last day of the convention because that's when all the penalties end. This vote happened days after that. The implication that you can't do A because of B is that B is invalidated. That's not the case. Therefore, that's a lie. Okay? It was in the current biennium that he made this vote. The lie that said it was only one vote and you need three violations, that's a lie. Because if I vote for something that violates three of the Republican Party principles, even though that's one vote, that's three separate items. He spent, he, he voted to spend billions of dollars in the, in the middle of an inflationary cycle due to overspending. That's a violation of the Republican Party platform. To be fiscally irresponsible, to exacerbate the problem with inflation, and to do it despite the fact that you're ignoring the Constitution as far as the Second Amendment goes, you're ignoring due process as far as the Second Amendment goes, or any of your rights, and that you would side with the Democrats or all violations of the Republican Party platform in Texas. Cornyn should have been censured across Texas in every county. There's no, there's no argument that he's a good person. There's no argument that he's a good Republican or that he represents what we believe or that he believes in the platform. He should be censured across Texas. Now, who's the next one up? Well, Dave Phelan, everybody across Texas now at least knows Dave Phelan's name in conjunction with he deserves to be censured. Because when he seats the first Democratic chair, it'll be a strike. The second Democratic chair, the third Democratic chair, that's three strikes. At three strikes, every county GOP in Texas should censor that man out of politics. If we keep firing speakers and humiliating them and kicking them out of politics for life, through this censure process, eventually we will have people who stop selling their souls to the Democrats in order to be Speaker. And when that happens, maybe, maybe we'll get a good Speaker. Maybe we'll get an actual conservative instead of just a Republican. 
So, not to be outdone by the last uh, people, Jill Glover and John Beckmeyer was were at the Tyler event. Okay, we've got a lot of people were at that event. They heard what was said. Jill Glover said you could not censure the man if you didn't live in his county. That's BS. He's Speaker of the House. He represents all of Texas. Of course you can do it. We've done it in the past. We'll do it in the future. When approached afterwards and challenged because our SREC member voted against, you know, voted for censure for Strauss, she immediately, along with John Beckmeyer, said, oh, well, I guess you're right. Uh, yeah, and if you do that, we'll support it 100%. Wow, that's 180, okay? That's hard to believe that they'd make a 180. Now, if I was proven wrong, if I was in a speech and I said you couldn't do something that you were allowed to do, and then somebody approached me and challenged me with the facts, and I, I figured out I was wrong, and I've been wrong before, and I'll be wrong again, I'd immediately ask for the mic again to correct it. This was not done, folks. So if you're going to go to a meeting... And one of the speakers there stands up and says, you cannot, as a county, censure Dave Phelan because you don't live in his county. You have to immediately challenge that person. Because either A, they're ignorant, or B, they're dishonest. But we have to challenge this. Now, my feeling is you will see this Multiple SRECs are fanning out across Texas and sharing this lie. And the only reason to do it is to protect the incumbent and to protect the power being concentrated at the state level instead of at the county level. If this is news to you that you didn't know that you your, your county level GOP could censure a sitting senator, president, governor, anybody in the Republican Party... I'm glad to share it with you. So to fix this thing, to fix this nation, this state, and your, and maybe your state rep or your state senator, this has to be done. Nobody else is going to do it. Nobody else is going to step forward and do it. It has to be our first option. Uh, and speaking of that, individuals have more power than you can possibly imagine. We have a situation in a county where massive voter fraud, and this is a Republican-led county, there is a situation where there, there might be massive voter fraud going on, where something that passed by 54% might have actually failed by, I don't know, a 4-to-1 margin. Okay? So what an individual has done, or is in the process of doing, they're pulling the voters, the, the election results, they're looking for the precinct with the smallest turnout. Say there's 50 or 75 votes to that precinct. They're calling these voters up, saying, hey, it said, this thing says it passed 54%. How did you vote? Once they're done with that phone, uh, phone canvassing, they're going to approach these people with sworn affidavits, get them to fill it out, and say, I voted against this. Now, if 80% of those people say they voted against it, but the election was certified in that precinct, that it passed. That's a strong indication there was fraud in that precinct. That's proof. These are sworn affidavits under penalty of perjury. Now, what's the county's proof that this election was real? Why is this important? Well, it, if it can be proven that there's fraud in one precinct, you can bring in the state to look at the other precincts. If we can prove there was fraud across this county, we can press charges. Everybody's going to say, well, our state legislator lowered the penalty from a, a felony to a misdemeanor because they damn well knew they were going to cheat at elections. And they didn't want to go to prison for it, so they lowered the penalty. There's no other reason to lower the penalty. Yes, they lowered the penalty for voter fraud. But voter fraud does not happen in a vacuum at this level. There had to be more than one person involved if this is proven to be true. And if there was more than one person involved, it's not election fraud anymore. It's called conspiracy to commit a crime. And conspiracy can still be a felony. And you might see sitting congressmen pulled out of office and put in prison. You might see county officials go to prison. If there's any justice at all, if this fraud 
of our elections, which people that I know died to protect and preserve and defend, is not prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, it's a shame and a crime. But that's what one person can do. And if that one person can prove the fraud was across the county, they can approve, they can they can indicate that the fraud is across the state. They can prove these machines have caused fraud across our nation. And that's one person. One person. You're one person. Do something to equal what that one person is doing. And watch how fast this country can turn around. Robert West signing off. Robert West Podcast.